Okay, population ecology looks at how populations grow over time or decrease over time, essentially understanding how and why they grow. I um, did my research uh, for my dissertation on bowhead whales, as you are all aware of, because that's also your favorite animal. Um, and some of the um, some of my results are helpful in understanding how populations grow because I was looking at reproductive rate of these bowhead whales. Um, and Arctic whales are, are very difficult to study because of where they are located. They're in the ocean. You can't really directly observe them very easily. Um, and they migrate to and from different areas of Alaska. That's what this is showing. Um, they spend their summer months up here in the Arctic Ocean and the winter months down here in the Bering Sea. Um, and so I was looking at this specific population of bowhead whales, but there are many other populations which go um, into Russia and Greenland and Canada, um, but all, ex all inhabiting these Arctic waters. Um, so one of the things that I looked at was the reproductive rate of females. And by understanding that, we can have a better understanding of um, the population's potential for increasing over time or decreasing over time. And thus, um, this can help manage the species because there are still um, native Alaskans who hunt and use the whale for food. Um, so how many are taken each year is a complex process which um, is under tight regulation and they take into account the population ecology in order to determine that. All right, so going, oops, going backwards a little bit, a population which we just discussed before is a group of individuals of the same species that lives in the same general area. So they have their um, it's not the same as a community, but the population itself um, has its subgroup within the larger species itself. Um, so again, the species that I was, or the population that I was looking at, inhabited this number four, Bering Chukchi Beaufort Sea, but there are other species uh, populations in other areas of the Arctic. Um, the density is the number of individuals per unit area, as it is for other parameters you may look at. And then dispersion is looking at how they space between them. And populations are the basic unit of organization for ecology, which looks at the, the larger scale of things. So some of the properties of populations which are important to understand include the sex ratio. So how many males and females are in <clears throat> the area, which will um, determine how reproductive they can be or how they're, much they're growth can sustain. So in the bowhead whale population, it's about 50-50, as it is in humans. The age structure is also important. So bowhead whales don't sexually mature till about 25 years of age, and this is important for their management. Um, they have such a late age of sexual maturity um, that the older and bigger whales should be preserved so that they can continue to reproduce. Uh, dispersion. Are they clumped, random, or uniform? So here we have a clumped group of sea stars. Okay, here's a uniform spacing between these penguins. Um, this is due to um, the, at this time, they're all um, nesting their little eggs. Um, or random, which is just kind of depending on dispersal. Uh, Bowhead whales live in small groups or are solitary. So they have usually a random to clumped distribution or dispersion. Distribution for, for bowhead whales is from the Bering Sea to the Arctic coast of north and west of Canada, um, at least my population that I studied. And density. The density of bowhead whales pre-whaling was about 30,000 per 27,000 kilometers. Um, after whaling or currently it's at 10,000 but it was thought that it was as low as two to three thousand so it experienced significant decline um, and seems to be rebounding since then 
So population is usually observed as just a snapshot. So how many are in this population? But to understand the dynamics of the population, you have to look at it over time. So how it changes is called population dynamics, and the central, which is the central question in ecology. So will this population grow or shrink? And what are the major, major and minor fluctuations to it? And what are the major and minor fluctuations it will have on others? And so there are a number of research organizations, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the North Slope Borough, the North Pacific Research Board, which are interested in understanding how this population is growing or shrinking, the, essentially the population dynamics. So when you look at the very, very basics of it, what are the factors that go into population dynamics? Well, you have things that are going to cause it to increase in density, which is going to be more births, more individuals, or immigration. So um, whales coming from other population into that population. Or you're going to have things which are going to decrease density, such as deaths and those leaving the population. Uh, we use n to represent the number of population individuals in a population, and then the change in population size equals the births, births plus the immigrants, the positives, minus the deaths minus the immigrants, the um, negatives. Um, if we have that information, we can also look at um, the per capita growth. Um, which is per individual how much change is, is going on. B, lowercase b, represents then the per capita birth rate, so the number of births per individual in the population. M is the mortality rate, per capita mortality rate um, per individual. And B minus N then equals the per capita rate of increase. If you have more births than mortalities, than deaths, then it will increase. If you have mortalities and births, then it will decrease. And that is associated by a positive or negative value. So to understand this over time, we're going to look at T. So our change in population, which is the delta N, over our change in time equals the rate, the individual, so the per capita rate of increase times the number of individuals in that population. If R is positive, you're going to have growth, uh, positive growth rate. Um, and birth rate will be more than mortality rate. If it's negative, then it's the opposite, right? So um, that will having that value will allow us to estimate populations. So there are a few variations of R. Um, this is just by itself is called the discrete per capita rate of incre increase. So if there's reprodu reproduction only once per year. Um, R, lowercase i, inst, our instantaneous per capita rate of increase is if reproduction is at any time. So mice have um, the ability, ho house mice, to reproduce continuously. R max then is the maximum per capita rate of increase. So under ideal conditions, how much are they going to increase? All right, so an example of this. Again, going to the bowhead population. If there's 10,000 bowhead whales, you have 2,000 reproducing uh, reproductive females, and they reproduce every once every four years, then that means you're going to have 500 as long as they do one calf per female per year, right? 500 per year. Okay, if we're going to do the per capita rate of increase or the lowercase b, then we're going to divide that by the Population, 500 divided by 10,000, that's 0 0.05. There are approximately 300 deaths per year. So M equals 300 per year. And then divide that by the total population, which is equal 0 0.03. So then R equals 0 0.05 minus 0 0.03 or 0 0.02 or 2%. So it's increasing by 2% every year. If you take 100 whales per year, how is that going to affect the population? Well, we would increase M to 400, and then we would have 0 0.05 minus 0 0.04, and you would still have an increase in population. Okay, so the change in N, the delta N equals RN, equals the number of new whales, total number of whales equals the old N plus the new N, 
So in the original population plus the rate times the n is going to help you calculate the population increase. All right, so after one year, you'd have 10,200. After two years, you'd have 10,400. You can extrapolate that then through 200 years, you would have 5 million wells. Well, that's, that's not exactly realistic, but that represents exponential growth. Okay, this assumes the ideal environment, unlimited resources. And if, and if R is greater than zero, the population will grow at a constant rate forever. And that creates this J-shaped curve that you see here. And uh, if R is greater, then the angle is, a, is greater. But both of these are still exponential. Okay, which is what I just said, answered there. All right, does exponential growth rate ha happen? Yes. So they put a bunch of caribous on this island that didn't have any caribou there. Um, and they looked at their population change over time. And you can see, look, it has this J curve here. Um, but eventually, something happened. And that is it ran out of resources. Food, it also had disease. Um, and so eventually, competition causes birth rates to decrease and death rates to increase. And you have... Um, a decrease in the population. So exponential great growth rate is always temporary, but does occur generally when you have a colonizing species, something species that isn't there, but now is there and has all these resources, um, such as an invasive species, or perhaps after a natural disaster, which releases a new influx of uh, resources, which otherwise weren't available. It usually stops when you have um, the population reaching its maximum size. Okay, and this maximum size is called the carrying capacity and is represented by this uppercase K. Now, if you use this in a model um, of growth, this is called the logistic model, it takes into account that carrying capacity and it makes a different shaped curve. It makes a S shaped cur curve. And this is the um, equation for that. You have your R max and N, which is the same, but we're going to multiply that by the carrying capacity minus the current population divided by the carrying capacity. So that then, when you calculate that out, as you get closer and closer to the carrying capacity, this rate decreases more and more until it gets to zero. So when N equal K, the R is zero. If N is greater than K, so if we overshoot that, then the population will decrease. So what happens when n equals k? Well, that's where you get no growth rate. If n is greater than k, then it's going to have to decrease. When n is much lower than k, then you get this j-shaped curve. So you have exponential growth rate there at the beginning. Um, and this makes the sigmoidal curve. At low population size, that's where you get the exponential growth rate, but the closer you get to K, the lower the growth rate. And it evens off and should remain somewhat stable around that carrying capacity. Okay, so let's look at the bowhead whales as an example again. Um, so we'll talk about sustainable yield in a second, but first, what happens if we put our carrying capacity into the model? Well, let's say the carrying capacity is 30,000 whales, and we're currently at 10,000 whales. We calculated our R max at 0 0.02. Well, what, how many whales are we going to have next year? Well, if you plug those numbers into the model, 0 0.02 is R, N is 10,000, K is 30,000, you find out that the, cha the change in individuals is going to be 133. So the next year we'll have 10,133. Um, and that will change every year. As we get closer to 30,000, this will decrease every year until it gets to zero. So um, a sustainable yield or a harvest in which you can increase or maintain a population is going to be where after um, 
you calculate the R max, you're going to be hopefully close to the carrying capacity. Um, but after adjusting it, the R max would be zero. Okay, the maximum yield is going to be all the way up to that inflection point, which we'll talk about more in class. All right, and that's all we're going to do for population ecology. We'll talk about what this means for humans in class.